What I really like to do is when, when flipping in dirty water sometimes, or just in general, I really like to match the bait to my conditions. Uh, whether I got an ounce and a half Tokyo rig right here, I'm, I'm flipping a Zoom Z crawl, and I actually went with black and red. You know, these fish are really pulling up, and like we talked about a little earlier, these fish are eating, they're keying in on crawfish. You know, baits that are, are prey that's really high in protein and that's why it's just it's really cloudy it's overcast conditions and just give them something that really kind of contrasts the water sometimes you to, to tell you the truth the more camouflage the bait is with the water the harder you think it is to see it's it's actually a better bait for those conditions these fish that's what they're used to everything is camouflaged in the water sometimes the more the the bait contrasts against the water usually not always the better it is it's something you want to just kind of blend in with the conditions it's very subtle um, a lot of people don't like the color black but black and blue black and red flake or just black just straight in general are very good colors what we're doing here is typically when the fish are really starting to pull up to spawn they're going to spawn on these little trees or these bigger sets of trees and really the clumps and sometimes you want to find something that's just different an irregularity see we're fishing all around all cypress trees and sometimes just keying in on a tupelo tree or something but we've had this cold front come through and so what we're actually keying on today is what's different is the grass we're actually looking for matted vegetation and something that is just a little bit different where it might be holding just a little more heat where they might just be tucked in there trying to weather the storm it's like when you think about it when you're sitting at your house and a, and a massive cold front comes through and you're like you know what i'm just gonna sit on the couch today and watch the football game i'm not gonna go outside and shovel any snow it's they're about the same way when you really sometimes you just got to give them something a little bit different and show them that Tokyo just like you they don't want to be they want to be sitting on the couch and sitting in the heat, and that's what that giant mat right there is. That's a nice old lazy boy with a furnace heater. Say T. Cooper, baby. All right, well that fish just trashed that bait, but what we're doing is we're actually throwing a darker color. We're actually throwing black and red right here. This is just a little Z-Crawl Junior. And the water's really dirty in this area right here, and it's very cloudy. And what we're doing is we're focusing on flipping mats. And so if it's dark right here where you can actually see it, you got to think about how low light it is under those conditions where she's just sitting on the couch in there the lights are off and you got to have something that she can at least see it a little bit better just something that contrasts a lot better and say if we were to throw say like a green pumpkin silver it looks really good when the sun is out but just right now up under that mat she won't really be able to see it as well so that's why we're going to try to contrast a little bit and go with a, a black and red one of my favorite things about the Tokyo rig, which we've talked about many times, is truly how versatile this bait is. I actually have this thing paired with an ounce and a half weight right now because we're, we're flipping it in that mat. And what I love about it is a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to throw a normal peg down ounce and a half. That's the same old thing. But truly, if you look at this bait, when that soft plastic is under that mat, look how free the motion is of that. So whether if I'm flipping it on a tree or I'm reeling it across a point, the Tokyo rig is just that versatile where we can throw it on a tree and you can worm it or you can really put a, a good bit of weight on here which we have a vmc ounce and a half tungsten right here and just send it clean through the thickest stuff you can find on your lake this bait in the water when you look at it look how much more motion that bait has so when that thing's under the mat like that they literally they just they can't stand it it's it's something they don't see because always they're used to a pegged weight and a pegged weight does not have nowhere near that kind of motion. And when you're fishing these mats, you really want to have a strong rod. This is actually a Daiwa eight foot heavy flipping stick. And every, every rod is different, but you got to find the rod that really is suitable to you. But you got to have a lot of backbone. It's, I'm fishing Suffolk 65 pound braid right here. And you got to have the rod and the line that can be able to get the fish out. It's, if you don't have a strong enough rod, all she's gonna do is just dog you in there. Because it's not necessarily that you're catching bigger fish is why you need a bigger rod. It's how much tension that fish puts on you when you're trying to pull it through that grass. The, the hardest part is mainly pinning that fish to the grass and just dealing with all that grass. Because when you set the hook, it's got a, 
it's got to rip and tear through all the grass that it possibly can and then you have to be able to pull that fish out of the mat and that's why you need more of a longer rod to get that leverage on the fish and be able to truly go over in there and be able to get that fish out.